Hi, I'm Shao. Uh, in the following uh, video, I will examine some uh, opinions or concepts regarding uh, the perception of depth in uh, images and specifically um, the appearance of uh, 3D pop. Uh, it's a subject that has been uh, thoroughly discussed in, uh, in recent uh, years and uh, it, it, there is some controversy over the, those concepts. So I will try to address them um, based on my experience, uh, my uh, observations and uh, my uh, analysis. First, um, 3D pop does not exist. Well, it uh, definitely exists to my eyes, but then uh, all photographic images are uh, two-dimensional, they're, they're flat and uh, any appearance of uh, depth or pop is subjective, um, it's an illusion. So it might uh, very well be that uh, the perception uh, depends on the observer, and not only on the image. Some of you may not be able to, to notice it. Um, number two, depth perception is uh, dictated by the number of elements in the lens. Uh, well, I, I, I've done some uh, statistical analysis based on uh, the poppiness of uh, 50 different lenses. Uh, uh, I came to the conclusion that uh, the number of elements per se does not uh, have an effect on uh, the perception of depth or on uh, uh, 3D pop. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, some of the best pop came from uh, zoom lenses with uh, 14, 15, 17 uh, elements. Uh, what does dictate the, uh, the perception of depth is uh, the types of glass used in the lens. So, uh, to put it uh, Simply, the chemistry of the image is uh, dictated by the chemistry of the glass. Number three, depth perception uh, is related to uh, microcontrast. Well, uh, I don't like the term uh, microcontrast because uh, I don't really understand uh, what it means. Uh, well, I do, but uh, it's not a, a good um, term, I think, to describe uh, the perception of uh, uh, depth. Uh, what does dictate uh, uh, the perception of depth, depth is uh, uh, basically, uh, the amount of uh, dispersion that occurs in the in the glass elements, uh, you need a little bit of uh, dispersion or uh, chromatic aberration uh, to. Uh, 
to create a transition zone uh, on the edges of uh, surfaces. By transition zone I mean that uh, to adjacent uh, surfaces uh, do not have uh, uh, sharp edges, but uh, the edge area is uh, a little blurred. It's a mixture between uh, the, the two uh, uh, surfaces. Uh, this is how uh, we, we see the world with our naked eyes and uh, some types of uh, uh, glass have, uh, have a better representation of it uh, than others. Uh, specifically, uh, glass that allows some uh, uh, dispersion. I believe the term micros, micro contrast refers to the tonal gradation uh, transmitted uh, by the, the glass in the lens. Good poppy lenses have a uh, tonal gradation from uh, shadow to highlight uh, similar to uh, the tonal gradation uh, typical of our uh, naked eyes. Uh, our eyes are also optical uh, devices or, or um, apparatus uh, that uh, have their own uh, optical uh, properties of course and uh, some types of uh, glass uh, have a similar resistance uh, to light. Uh, other types of glass, mainly uh, low density glass types or uh, extra low dispersion glass types, uh, have a a sharp uh, uh, transition of, uh, of, of tonality. Number four, uh, lead glass has a, a high uh, depth perception. Uh, the, the term lead glass refers to a more general type of glass that is uh, uh, flint glass, which uh, is infused with uh, heavier uh, elements, uh, lead oxide, or, or I mean, is, is only one uh, possibility. Uh, other possibilities are lanthanum, which is less uh, toxic, so it's uh, it, it it has been replacing uh, lead or uh, titanium oxide or zirconium oxide. There are many more uh, metals that can replace uh, uh, lead. The general term for this uh, high density, high uh, refractive index uh, glass is flint glass. And uh, it's, it's not an expensive uh, glass, it's quite uh, common. To, to achieve a good uh, tonal gradation you need uh, some of the glass in, in the lens to be this uh, flint glass. A good uh, balance is, uh, is achieved by about uh, uh, 20 to 30 percent uh, of uh, uh, those uh, glass types in the lens. Uh, if you use uh, any more, uh, you might get uh, low contrast uh, images that uh, do not do not appear uh, natural to our eyes. The, the images they make do not. Uh, appear uh, uh, natural or true to life so uh, they do not convey uh, uh, depth. 
in a in a proper manner. Uh, it's it's easier to increase uh, contrast than decrease contrast after uh, the exposure. So uh, in such lenses, uh, you can still achieve a good uh, true to life. Uh, uh, rendition of in in general lead uh, has been banned in the, in, in uh, the production of uh, uh, lenses, uh, but I think in China they, they are still allowed to to use it. Uh, so at least uh, this lens, which is a um, modern lens uh, based on an uh, old uh, Leica design is, is stated to contain uh, lead glass and uh, by the, the weight of it it is uh, small but uh, quite, quite heavy uh, I think a large uh, percentage of, of the glass used is uh, lead glass and uh, it makes very uh, low contrast uh, images um, with uh, a busy uh, distracting uh, rendering of the um, out of focus uh, areas, which is uh, another characteristic of uh, flint glass. I think that uh, the, the correct uh, composition of uh, glass in, in, in a lens is uh, about uh, 70 to 80 uh, percent medium density glass and uh, 20 to 30 uh, percent uh, high density glass uh, like the, the, the lens uh, filming me now which is the Nikon uh, 28 uh, f1.4e um, it is definitely better than flint glass alone or uh, too much uh, extra load uh, dispersion uh, glass, which is uh, ultra light or, or, or very low uh, density. Number five, uh, prime lenses have uh, more micro contrast than uh, uh, zooms. Uh, well, that is uh, not necessarily uh, true. It, it is uh, only circumstantial because uh, uh, most uh, modern zooms uh, uh, contain a lot of uh, extra low dispersion glass, while um, uh, some of the primes do not but it's not necessarily a good way to uh, to discern between uh, uh, poppy lenses and uh, uh, flat lenses. Uh, in fact, some of the uh, more uh, poppy lenses uh, I, I have tried are, are, are zooms. Uh, however, there are uh, older zooms uh, from uh, 20, 30 years ago and uh, not uh, modern ones. Number six, um, Zeiss lenses of uh, more micro contrast. Uh, well, I, 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 I really wouldn't know. I have only one uh, Zeiss lens and uh, it, uh, it is poppy, but it is not uh, significantly different from uh, other uh, similar lenses uh, for, from the same uh, era. Uh, if, you, if you compare the lens I have, the, the 
Plana 50mm f1.4 to uh, an equivalent uh, uh, Nikon lens 50mm f1.4 uh, D you cannot uh, tell the difference uh, between them if anything I, I prefer the Nikon because it is uh, better performing uh, wide open in general uh, lenses designed for uh, rangefinders are uh, have better depth perception than uh, lenses designed for uh, DSLRs or, or even uh, mirrorless uh, systems. Uh, that is because uh, those lenses uh, have to be quite uh, small so they do not cause too much uh, viewfinder uh, blockage uh, and um, to be small they, they, they need to contain uh, more um, high density glass uh, which also contributes to the dimensionality of the images so uh, it is not uh, by design, I don't think, it's, it's more a side effect of the um, lenses uh, having to be smaller.